Before the video slash recording starts, uh, thank you guys so much for being patient with me and my horror narrations, um, and also for my podcast. So this will also be broadcasted on my podcast, which was formerly known as uh, Spill the Lychee Tea. It will keep the name for a few more episodes, um, but I am going to change the name of the podcast eventually. So I decided to put the horror narrations and the podcast together into just reading horror narrations. But without further ado, thank you guys so much. And let's start with the video. Hey everyone, today we're reading two stories from the Reddit Let's Not Meet. To the eerie guy that tried to follow me to my apartment. I got off work around 11 p.m. And the sad part about this is, I volunteered to work this shift. If I had never offered, I would have never experienced this. This particular apartment is on my college campus. My campus is an open campus, which means anyone could enter at any time. As a female, I guess that's pretty unnerving. However, I always carried a pocket knife and pepper spray. I had to park pretty far away from my apartment, since most parking spots were filled. I finally found a parking spot, but thank god, I checked my surroundings before I got out. There was a fairly tall, grimy old man standing about 50 feet away from me. This sent chills down my spine because he stood so still. He looked like a mannequin. But I could see his bloodshot eyes. They were wide open. Now I knew I wasn't getting out of the car, but what the man yelled to me made my heart pound out of my chest. Come here, pretty girl, he said with a sly, creepy grin on his face. I don't know why I did it, but I shot a bird at him. Probably because I had a feeling he was a pervert or something. I put my car in reverse and backed out of the parking spot, keeping my eyes on the man. My heart pounded even harder when he started speed walking towards me. He was about 10 feet away from my car when I finally put my car in drive and stomped on the gas pedal. I literally drove to the other side of the apartments and panicked. I called my roommate slash best friend and told her what had just happened. I asked her to wait for me at the door and stay on the phone with me. I stayed in my car for about 5 more minutes to calm myself down. I kept looking around to see if the guy followed me, but he was nowhere to be seen. I didn't want to get out of my car, however I had to get in my apartment somehow. I parked in a spot where my apartment wasn't too far away anymore. I decided to book it towards my room. I had my best friend on FaceTime the entire time I sprinted. I flew down two flights of stairs until finally I was about a hundred feet away from my door. I saw my best friend waving at me. A feeling of relief came over me, but just for a few seconds. Now I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Get Out, but just picture a grown ass man sprinting towards you, because that's what happened. The grimy old man hauled ass towards me, but this time he looked pissed. It was like a scene straight out of horror movie. I don't know how he found me, and I don't know what his problem was, but I could have broken the national record for the 40 meter dash. I darted towards my door. Thankfully, I reached my apartment just in time. Right when my best friend and I slammed the door, the man's fingers got caught in the crack. He screamed and tried to shove the door open, but somehow my best friend and I surprisingly shut him out. That happened about a year ago. My best friend and I never spoke on it, ever. I never saw the man again. I never volunteered to work another night shift. I never worked another night shift, period. 
And I never, ever shot a bird at anyone else. To the man who traumatized me, let's not meet ever again. To the guy that tried to kill me, I'm a 19 female French student, so please excuse my English. This event happened last week. I was heading to my apartment after seeing a friend. I took the tramway at 11.30 because I didn't feel comfortable walking at night. As soon as I sat, a man who was already sitting nearby came and sat in front of me. I had a very strange feeling about it, so I told my boyfriend by chat. Then I stood up to get out of the tram, but the man quickly got out after me. He was weirdly following me, not walking behind me, but next to me. I was getting very anxious, knowing something was wrong. So I continued to walk to the avenue I live in. I crossed the road, and he didn't, so I thought it was okay. But a few seconds after, he crossed the road too, and was walking behind me. Then he passed me, and was walking in front of me. So I thought I was just getting paranoid, and that he was just walking this way too. But near my building, he stopped and waited until I met him. He asked me if I had a boyfriend and all, and I answered, Yeah, sorry, good evening. As polite as I could be. He proceeded to walk in front of me, so I was walking slower for him to be further away from me, and to make sure he didn't know I was almost at home. I turned into the little pathway heading to the lobby of my building, but I was still anxious about this man, even though he continued to walk. I thought I had put my keys in my pocket, but they were in my bag, so I was shaking so much that I tried multiple times to grab them. I managed to get them, and I opened the magnetic door, but thought of closing the door immediately after me, in case the man wanted to follow me. The door was closed, but the magnetic system wasn't on yet, so that man was running to it and pushed it violently with horrific eyes, looking at me. The door is made of glass, so I totally saw him. That's when I knew I was getting into real trouble, so without even thinking I screamed as loud as I could, and I think that's what saved my life. Immediately, the man ran to me, pushed me hard on the ground, and started to choke me really hard. I was too stunned because I wasn't prepared for such a violent assault. While he was choking me, I couldn't scream at all, or even breathe, and nobody was coming, so I really fought. I was going to die. Looking to his bulging eyes, staring directly into mine, with pure hate. I am a small size, so I wasn't really able to do anything with my arms at all. I think it wasn't that long, but it felt like an eternity and I lost consciousness for a moment. When I opened my eyes again, he had just ran out and I saw the caretaker's wife besides me. The caretaker was chasing after the man, but didn't manage to get him. He came back and called the police that caught the man within 10 minutes, thanks to our description. I really don't know why he did that to me because when he attacked me, he didn't sexually assault me or rob me, which would have been easy. I can't understand what his goal was. I'll never be thankful enough to my caretaker who came to help me and saved my life, because nobody else in the building called the police or tried to help. The man was judged three days later and is in jail now, but denied everything even though me and the caretaker identified him and even though there are video proofs of him following me. So to that man that tried to kill me, let's not meet again.